Standard 6th Subject Maths Chapter 11 Ratio Proportion Practice Set 29 Dear students, let us learn about the unitary method which will be used for this particular practice set. Let's have a look at an example. Vijaya wanted to give pens to seven of her friends on her birthday. When she went to a shop to buy them, the shopkeeper told her the rate of for the rate for a dozen pens. What did he say? You can have a look at the picture. A dozen pens cost rupees eighty four. And now Vijay is thinking, but I want seven pens. So how can she find the cost for seven pens? She will first have to find out the cost of one pen. And when that cost she gets, she can find the cost for 7 pence. So can you help Vijay to find the cost of 7 pence? Yes. If you find the cost of 1 pen, you can also find the cost of 7, right? So, as the shopkeeper has said, a dozen pence cost rupees 84 means 12 pence is costing 84. So 1 pen will cost 84, we will have to divide by 12. And you will get 12 sevens are 84. Like this, you will get the cost of 1 pen. That is 7 rupees. And then, after dividing, to find the cost for 7 pens, you will multiply again by 7. So, 7 sevens are 49. That means, altogether, Vijaya will have to pay rupees 49. So, what did we do here? First, we found the cost of 1 pen from many and then we multiplied it with the number of pens she wanted to buy. So first division then multiplication. So what exactly is unitary method? Now I know find the cost of one article from that of many by division. Then find the cost of many articles from that of one by multiplication. This method of solving a problem is called the unitary method. Okay, it's very simple. As you solve the sums, you will be able to understand it clearly. So, let's move on to practice set number 29. First sum. If 20 meters of cloth cost rupees 3600, find the cost of 16 meter of cloth. So you look at the answer. Cost of 20 meter of cloth is equal to rupees 3600. We write the first statement as it is. That the cost of 20 meter cloth is so and so. 3600. Therefore, if we want to find the cost of 1 meter of cloth. How can we find it? We will have to divide. Remember, first divide and then multiply. So 3600 divided by 20. 110 will get reduced to 18 are 36 and one more zero so 180. You can solve in rough and find the answer. You get the cost of 1 meter cloth rupees 180. Now look at the question. Find the cost of 16 meter of cloth. We want now 16 meter of cloth. So easy. We have 1 meter of cloth rupees 180. Therefore 16 meter of cloth will cost us 180 multiplied by 16. So your statement will be cost of 16 meter of cloth is equal to rupees 180 multiplied by 16 is equal to rupees 2880. So final answer thus the cost of 16 meter of cloth is rupees 2880. What we did we just divided first and found the cost of 1 meter cloth and then we multiplied it with 16 meter to find the cost of 16 meter of cloth. So this is called unitary method. Second sum. Find the cost of 8 kg of rice if the cost of 10 kg is rupees 325. Look at the question. So your answer is the first statement the cost of find the cost of 8 kg of rice we will come to later. 
what is given to us cost of 10 kg is given so we take that first cost of 10 kg of rice is equal to rupees 325 it's given so from this cost of 10 kg we will divide and find the cost of 1 kg therefore cost of 1 kg of rice is equal to first division 325 upon 10 is 32 rupees 50 paise 32.5 you know how to convert into a decimal fraction now cost of 1 kg we got and in the question they are asking us to find the cost of 8 kg of rice so we write cost of 8 kg of rice is equal to 32.50 into 8 is equal to rupees 260 you will solve this in the rough column working column and you will find the answer. Thus, the cost of 8 kg of rice is rupees 260 is your final answer. Third sum. If 14 chairs cost rupees 5992, how much will have to be paid for 12 chairs? So, we take a first statement. Cost of 14 chairs is equal to rupees 5992. Now, what is your step? Yes, you have to find the cost of one chair first. Therefore, cost of one chair is equal to division. 5,992 divided by 14. After division, you will get your answer rupees 428. You will have to do again working column for this. Now that we got cost of one chair, look at the question. How much will have to be paid for 12 chairs? So, cost of 12 chairs is equal to rupees 428 multiplied by 12 is equal to 5136 after doing your working you will get your final answer you can write the statement thus the amount of money to be paid for 12 chairs is rupees 5136 fourth question solve the following the weight of 30 boxes is 6 kg what is the weight of 1080 such boxes? So, a question is quite clear here. Let's write the statement. First statement, weight of 30 boxes is equal to 6 kg. Now, what do we have to find? Yes, weight of 1 box. So, weight of 1 box is equal to 6 upon 30 is equal to 1 upon 5 kg. Okay. We got it in a fraction form answer. Now, what is the question? What is the weight of 1080 such boxes? Therefore, the weight of 1080 boxes is equal to 1 upon 5 multiplied by 1080 is equal to, when you divide 1080 by 5, you get 216 as answer. So, 216 kg. Thus, the weight of 1080 such boxes is 216 kg. Question number 5. A car travelling at a uniform speed covers a distance of 1,165 kilometers in 3 hours. At that same speed, there are two sub-questions now. First, how long will it take to cover a distance of 330 kilometers? And second, how far will it travel in 8 hours? So, we will solve this as per the sub-questions. So, first we will take the first sub-question. How long it will cover to take a distance of 330 kilometers? So, we will have to first find for 1 kilometer how much time it is going to take. So, let us have a look at the solution. Time taken by car to cover... 165 kilometers is 3 hours. Therefore, time taken by car to cover 1 kilometer is equal to divide. 3 divided by 165 is equal to 1 upon 55 hours. Don't worry about the fraction. So, now they are asking us in the question, how much time it will take by car to cover 330 kilometers? A question. So, Time taken by car to cover 330 kilometer is equal to 1 upon 55 multiplied by 330. When you divide 330 by 55, you get answer as 6 hours. Thus, the time taken by car to cover a distance of 330 kilometers is 6 
hours. All right. Let's have a look at the B part now. Distance covered by the car in three hours is equal to one sixty-five kilometers. This is already given in the question. Now, what is asked? Distance covered by the car in eight hours. So we have to first find in one hour how much it will travel. Therefore, distance covered by the car in one hour is equal to one sixty-five upon three. Equals to fifty-five kilometers. So distance covered by the car in now eight hours. This is a B question, B part of the sum. Is equal to fifty-five multiplied by eight is equal to four forty kilometers. Thus the distance travelled by the car in eight hours is four hundred and forty kilometers. So basically we are finding year. One hour is equal to how many kilometers? Because we have been asked, the B part is eight hours. We have to find out when the unit asked is in hours. We find the distance also by one hour. When the unit is asking in A part kilometers, we find one kilometer is equal to how much, and then multiply. So depending upon the question, you have to find the quantity, and then. You have to multiply it. All right. Question number six. If you have not followed till now, now pay careful attention. I will explain again. A tractor uses up to twelve liters of diesel while plowing three acres of land. How much diesel will be needed to plow nineteen acres of land? Now see. First, you will have a look at the question. How much diesel will be needed to plow nineteen acres of land? That means we have to find the answer for nineteen acres. That means in the first place we will do the division for and find out for one acre of land how much. Remember that. Depending upon the question, we have to find the quantity of one unit. So let's see the solution. Amount of diesel. Used by tractor to plow three acres of land is equal to twelve liters. This is given. Therefore, amount of diesel used by tractor to plow one acre of land. See, in the question they are asking us about nineteen acres, so we are finding one acre first is equal to twelve divided by three is equal to four liters. Now, once you got for one acre, we can easily find for nineteen acres by multiplying four liters by nineteen. So, therefore, amount of diesel used by tractor to plow nineteen acres of land is equal to four into nineteen is equal to seventy-six liters. Thus, the amount of diesel needed to plow nineteen acres of land is seventy-six liters. All right. Next question number seven. At a sugar factory, five thousand three hundred and seventy-six kg of sugar can be obtained from forty-eight tons of sugar. If Savita Tai has grown fifty tons of sugar cane, how much sugar will it yield? Now let's have a look at the solution. Amount of sugar obtained from forty-eight tons. We write the statements is equal to five three seven six kg. Now we want to know the amount of Sugar obtained from fifty tons. So therefore, amount of sugar obtained from one ton we will find out. One ton of sugar cane is equal to five thousand three seventy six divided by forty eight, which gives after working out one hundred and twelve kg. Now we want to find the amount of sugar obtained from fifty tons. So we will multiply fifty with this one hundred and twelve. So see the next statement. Amount of sugar obtained from fifty tons of sugar cane is equal to hundred and twelve into fifty. After working, you get your answer five thousand six hundred kg. Thus, the amount of sugar yielded from fifty tons of sugar cane is five thousand six hundred kg, or fifty six hundred kg. Question number eight. In an orchard, there are one twenty eight mango trees in eight rows. If all the rows have an equal number of trees, how many trees would there be in thirteen rows? So, question asked is about thirteen rows. So, definitely we are going to find for one row and then multiply by thirteen. 
So let's have a look at the solution. Number of mango trees. Just watch out for spelling mistake here. M A not O. So number of mango trees in 8 rows is equal to 128. Therefore number of mango trees in 1 row. As I mentioned we have to find for 1 row is equal to 128 divided by 8 equals 16. Now the 16 we will multiply with the number of the rows that we want. We want for 13 rows. So number of mango trees in 13 rows is equal to the 16 multiplied by 13 is equal to 208. Thus there are 208 mango trees in 13 rows in an orchard. So basically in this practice set we are doing just the same step each time. First divide and then multiply the unitary method. Question number 9. The last question. A pond in a field holds 1,20,000 liters of water. It cost 18,000 rupees to make such a pond. How many ponds will be required to store 4,80,000 liters of water? And what would be the expense? So this is a little tricky question with two questions asked. First, how many ponds we have to find out? To store for 4 like 80,000 liters of water. And we have to find the cost also. Expense means the cost for it. So let's look at the solution. Number of ponds required to store 1 like 20,000 liters of water is equal to 1. Because it's given a pond in a field holds so and so water to 1 lakh 20. So only 1. Therefore. Number of ponds required to store 1 liter of water is equal to 1 divided by 1,20,000. Number of ponds required to store, now we, how much they have asked in the question? 4,80,000 liters of water is equal to 1 upon 1,20,000 into 4,80,000. You will reduce the zeros and 12 fours are 48. You will get your answer as 4. Thus 4 ponds are required to store 4,80,000 liters of water. What we did here? Again the same method. First division then multiplication. So accordingly we have written our statements. Now the second part. What expense? So cost of making one pond is equal to rupees 18,000. This is given in the question. Therefore, cost of making 4 pawns is equal to 18,000 into 4 is equal to rupees 72,000. 18 fours are 72 and the 3 zeros come along with the when you multiply. So, thus the expense to make 4 pawns to store 4 like 80,000 liters of water is rupees 72,000 is your final answer. So, students, do practice the sums well, write them down in your notebook and try to understand the concept as you solve them. Stay safe, keep learning and thank you.